We're back on the Colorado River, and today we're visiting the Laguna Dam, which was the very first dam on the river. Hey everyone, Steve with Sidetrack Adventures here. Right now I'm standing on the Laguna Dam, which was the very first dam built on the Colorado River. When this dam was built, it effectively ended the age of steamboat travel on the river. So right now I'm standing in Arizona and that's California behind me, but let's take a look around and check out the dam. Before coming out here, I looked at this area on Google Maps, but it's still surprising at the length of the dam when you're here. This dam is over 4,700 feet in length, almost a mile. The Laguna Dam is a diversion dam, meaning its purpose was to divert the flow of water rather than to create a reservoir. This dam didn't really raise the level of the river much. Right now we're walking towards the dam's California Sluiceway and you can kind of see the cement work on the dam here. The Arizona Sluiceway is in the opposite direction, but it doesn't really have any water going through it currently. The Arizona Sluiceway is where you'll find the dam's most infamous feature, but we'll get back to that in a bit. There are now 15 dams along the length of the Colorado River, but as I mentioned earlier, this was the first one. After the United States Congress passed the Reclamation Act in 1902, the next year, the United States Bureau of Reclamation started making plans to build a Laguna Dam to support agriculture in the area. Construction on the dam began in 1905. The construction was initially slow due to the difficulty transporting cement and poor rock quality in the area. The original company hired to build the dam missed their deadlines, forcing the Bureau of Reclamation to take over construction in 1907. Construction on the dam was finally completed in March 1909. When I think about the Colorado River, steamboats aren't something that usually come to mind. But up until the dam's construction, steamboats would travel the lower Colorado River from the Gulf of California to as far north as where Lake Mead is today. Beginning with the first steamboats on the river in 1852, they were vital in shipping goods to settlements throughout the southwest until the arrival of the railroad in the late 1800s. The opening of the dam in 1909 was pretty much the end of steamboat travel on the river, though the Bureau of Reclamation did continue to operate one north of the dam until that boat sunk in 1916. So as we continue walking to the California Sluiceway, let's talk about a feature of the dam that was innocent for its time, but due to events the builders could not have possibly foreseen, is something that really stands out on this dam and probably makes everyone who sees it do a double take and wonder what the heck is going on. During the dam's planning, core samples had shown that the dam site was on layer upon layer of silt that was carried down by the river over the ages, so a conventional dam site could not be used. United States Reclamation Service engineers ultimately based the design on a dam in northern India that was successfully built on silt. While studying the construction of the dam in India, the Reclamation Service also learned about an ancient Hindu goddess who had the power to control water and whose symbol was a four-armed swastika. So, during construction, the symbol was incorporated into the dam and can still be seen on the bridge over the Arizona Sluiceway. The swastika was a symbol of peace in many cultures going back thousands of years but unfortunately in the 1930s, the Nazis adopted the symbol and it came to stand for evil in the Western world. I'm sure the bridge raises a lot of questions to anyone who just comes across it, but it even predates the First World War and there's nothing sinister about it. As this dam wasn't really meant to hold water but to divert it, sometimes water spills over it. I'm not sure how long it's been since it's happened, but you could see some of the evidence of it here. There's rarely a lot of water behind this dam because the Imperial Dam was built just five miles north of here and when it opened in 1938, it pretty much took over the job of diverting the water and this dam just regulates the Imperial Dam's outflows now. Here are some seashells that got caught in the dam during a spillover. 
Alright, we've about made it to the California Sluiceway. I'm not exactly sure what that building is. I wasn't able to find out any information online, but maybe we'll be able to find out once we get a little bit closer. I believe it's the pump house, but I'm not 100% certain. Yeah, after taking a closer look, I'm still not certain what this is. I believe it's the pump house, but I don't know that for 100% certainty. So if anyone does know, please let me know in the comments. So here's the California Sluiceway on the Laguna Dam, and we're looking at the Colorado River as it travels through its last dam in the United States. So the Imperial Dam, when it was built, it kind of took the Laguna Dam's job. So the Laguna Dam is just basically regulating the flow of the water at this point. It doesn't really serve any other purpose. Here's a look at the Colorado River from on top of the gates. Right now I'm standing directly over the center of the Colorado River. The bridge over the Colorado is actually open right now. And so let's uh, walk into California real quick. And now we're in California. I should also mention that the western third of the dam is located on the Fort Yuma Indian Reservation. Native Americans were instrumental in the building of this dam. Here's a look back down the Laguna Dam from the California Sluiceway, looking back into Arizona. So that's our look at the Colorado River's Laguna Dam. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.